Well, good evening and welcome to our worship services this Wednesday night at Linden Baptist Church. We're glad that you can join with us today as we worship and praise God together. Yes, even still at a distance, even still not personally together in the same room, but united by Jesus Christ, our Savior, united by the Spirit. There's a lot of ways that you can still be interacting um, with Linden Baptist Church and worshiping God together during the week. Uh, Pastor Jim has just started a Bible study on the Sermon on the Mount that will go probably eight weeks. So if you missed yesterday's Tuesday Bible study, be sure to jump on Facebook and check that out. You can go ahead and catch up, and that'll be the next several weeks focusing on Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. And on Thursdays, Larice is doing the Living in the Spirit Bible study. The same thing. If you've missed a week already, that's no problem. Just go back and watch it, catch up, and join in on some of the discussion uh, during the future lessons that will be posted every week on Thursdays. So other than that, our health team is meeting weekly, trying to make the best plan for when and how not only we can meet together as a church in person, but that our building can be used again by the community, by the Han Mom Church, by the daycare. So be in prayer for those people that are on our health team as they're looking at a lot of different things right now and trying to bring it together into one plan uh, that best works for our church and our community here in Linden. So tonight we do remember that God is present with us always. So we'll begin our worship by singing, My Lord is near me all the time. We do come to our time of prayer. Each week, we spend time focusing on the concerns that we have for our community, 
for our family, for our friends, for our world. When we think about prayer, let me offer these thoughts. Prayer is bringing our concerns and petitions to God. Prayer is bringing petitions to God on behalf of others who need healing and restoration. Prayer is opening our hearts to God, sharing our deepest sorrows, our greatest joys, and offering our whole selves to Him. So tonight, as we bring ourselves to God, joining together in a time of prayer, Think about those petitions for healing, for transformation, for reconciliation that you want to lift in prayer as I offer a prayer, voice a prayer. I want to first read a prayer from Paul. It actually happens at the beginning of the book of 2 Corinthians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ the Father of mercies and the God of all consolation, who consoles us in all our affliction, so that we may be able to console those who are in any affliction with the consolation with which we ourselves are consoled by God. For just as the sufferings of Christ are abundant for us, so also our consolation is abundant through Christ. If we are being afflicted, it is, for your cons it is for your consolation and salvation. If we are being consoled, it is for your consolation, which you experience when you patiently endure the same sufferings that we are also suffering. Our hope, is, our hope for you is unshaken, for we know that as you share in our sufferings, so also you share in our consolation. As we do pray together, we share in the sufferings of those around us. Will you bow with me as we pray? Almighty God, in Jesus Christ, you taught us to pray and to offer petitions to you in his name. Guide us by your spirit that our prayers for others may serve your will and show your steadfast love through Jesus, our Lord. We pray for the church, your called-out body of Christ. Keep us one in faith and service, proclaiming the good news to the world that all may believe you are love. Turn and live in the light of your truth. You sent Jesus, your only Son, our Savior, to break down walls of hostility that divide us. Send peace on earth. Put down greed, pride, and anger. Soften the hearts of leaders so that they may hear the cries of the people. Give clarity and speech and openness to hear the hurts and needs of all people. Merciful God, you bear the pain of the world. You call us to be compassionate with all people. We open our hearts in these moments to lift in prayer all who face illness, pain, anxiety, those experiencing grief, and those living in fear. Bring healing, rest, comfort, and peace as a sign of your grace. Mighty God, whose spirit enables us to pray, accept our request and bring about your purpose on earth. This we pray in the name of the Son of in the name of Jesus Christ, who rules over all things. Amen. This Sunday, we heard Jesus giving us uh, the great commission to go forth and to tell all the world the good news of the gospel. And this is a great time to do that. It's easier maybe than it's ever been to connect with people, um, to connect with people that are not like yourself, to connect with people from other communities. We can even get on the internet and we can talk to someone 
on the other side of the world. I talk to my brother Dustin in Japan every week. You know, you can talk to people anywhere about the things that God is doing in your life and about the good news of Jesus Christ and his resurrection. And so God has made, a, made us one in the church of Christ, and he's done that through the power of Jesus Christ's resurrection and through the Holy Spirit. Today you can get online and you can watch any church you want just about because everyone is trying to provide that ministry to their own people through the internet. So I'd encourage you to um, lean into that unity through diversity this week. Check out the Bible studies and the worship services of some of the other churches in our area and outside of our area that maybe aren't quite like us, but so that you can see that the church of Christ is alive, the church of Christ is vibrant, and um, showing up all over the world right now during a difficult time. But let's sing together as we are united with the church universal, as we sing, Our God Has Made Us One. As the Apostle Paul brings to an end uh, his magnificent letter uh, to the church in Rome, uh, Paul um, puts a therefore at the beginning of a sentence. As Paul has talked about God's great work in reaching out to a, a world that has been destroyed by sin, as God has reached out to a world that uh, has uh, sought to go its own way uh, over against the, the purposes and the will of God. And that seeking of humanity and of this world to go its own way has wrought immeasurable destruction within the human community, within human lives, and w even within the creation itself. And as Paul describes uh, in the pages of this letter what God has been about in the person of Jesus Christ to heal and to restore and to renew. Uh, and he, he walks us through the gospel uh, with, with amazing detail uh, and, and with amazing passion. He, he shares with us the love of God and the desire of God and the heart of God. But in what we call the 12th chapter of this letter, uh, Paul begins the sentence with the word therefore, which means because of what God is doing, on the basis and on the grounds of the gospel, I appeal to you, Paul says, therefore, I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good 
acceptable and perfect. And then in the next several chapters in this letter, Paul goes on to describe what it looks like for us to live out the gospel in our lives, what it looks like to be people who, whose lives have been changed and transformed by the presence of the grace of God who comes to us in Jesus Christ. Uh, he reminds us that a true Christian is someone who lives by love and not by hate, who rejoices in hope and who is patient in suffering and persevering in prayer, one who contributes to the needs of all the people and offers hospitality uh, even to strangers and those we don't know, uh, uh, one who is a follower of Christ, blesses instead of curses, loves one's enemy, in fact goes beyond just loving and not seeking vengeance, but is, is willing to feed their enemy and clothe their enemy. And, and in the rest of these chapters, Paul goes on to talk about how it is that we live out our lives as transformed people by the grace of God. Now, I grew up in church, as, especially as a teenager. Our teenage uh, Sunday school teachers and our training union leaders and everybody used to love to, to quote to us teenagers, do not be conformed to this world. And then they would go on to talk about how we shouldn't dance and how we probably ought to avoid playing cards. And we certainly shouldn't neck and pet, and, and we needed to avoid alcohol and cigarettes. And in my town, you certainly didn't want to go above Lovern's Jewelry where there was a pool hall because we needed to be transformed. We, we needed to not be transformed by the world but we need to be transformed uh, in our minds. We don't need to conform to the world. And you know, as important as probably those things were for those of us who were teenagers, I think sometimes what we have tended to do in hearing Paul encouraging us not to be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind, we have reduced Paul's grand ad admonishment to us grand encouragement to us beyond this, this major scope of life change that Paul is, is, in, is admonishing us about. And we've turned it into a bunch of petty little rules about things that may not be very seemly. They, they may not be very nice. And, and we can probably avoid them without really changing much about our life at all. Paul is not talking about uh, a life change that just nibbles at the edges of our lives. Paul is talking about a life change that, that totally alters our perspective and our way of living and our way of seeing. Listen to his words again. Present your bodies, in other words, present your whole self as a sacrifice to God, as a holy sacrifice. In other words, present yourself as one who is totally dedicated, totally committed, totally offered to God. Wow. That, that's a lot more than just making a few little moral corrections. That, that's a lot more than just avoiding certain bad behaviors or inappropriate places. That, that talks about the whole of our being, the whole of our lives, everything that we think and everything that we say and everything that we do, all that we are is encompassed in offering our bodies as a living sacrifice to God. And on the basis of that, Paul then admonishes us and exhorts us, encourages us to not be conformed to this world. In other words, we who follow Jesus Christ need to, need to be carefully aware of the way that the values of this world seek to warp humanity, 
seek to warp and bend and yes, even destroy the human community. Think about it. One of the major values of the world economy is not cooperation. It's not everybody working together for the good of everybody else. No, if there is any good for all people that comes from the, uh, the economic system of our world, it's a byproduct. It's not the main thing. It's something that may happen, and if it, good, if it does, that's great. But the main focus of the, of the economic system of our world is competition. It's, it's putting people over against each other. Ford competes against General Motors. General Motors competes against Toyota. Toyota competes against Kia. All trying to be number one, to have the largest market share that there can be. Why, even hospitals compete with each other. Baptist Health, Norton Health, they compete with each other. They're nonprofits. They're not out to make money, but they compete with each other for market share for people who will be patients. See, our system is built on the fact that we're competing to see who can be number one. And, and, and in any, any kind of system of competition, there are winners and there are losers. There always has to be an us and a them. And that kind of value plays itself out in the whole of our, of our world. There have to be people on top. And the only way there can be people on top is if there are people on the bottom. In order for some people in our world to be rich, it means that other people have to be poor. Paul says, do not be conformed to this world. Do not let the value system of this world distort and warp your mind let go of that value system you know we even see that in politics and heavens to, to betsy our politics in the united states have gotten so much that that you wonder sometimes whether politics is really about the business of the city the business of the community the business of the country or whether it's strictly about one group of people trying to gain power over against another group of people. You see that competition motif there again? And instead of working for the common welfare and the common good, we start working for our own little group. And we begin to see that what's good for our group can't be good for somebody else, or what's good for somebody else can't be good for our group. Paul says, do not be conformed to this world. Now, lest you think I'm just simply beating up on the economic system and the political system, let me tell you, the church gets into that too. Churches compete with each other. You know, we, churches get jealous. We look at this church over here, that church over there, and we think, well, you know, I wish we could be like them or... They must be doing something terrible in order to be what they are. So we, 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 we start finding ourselves doing things in order to be like a church that we perceive as being successful. Or to keep from being like a church that we feel like may be a failure. Paul says, do not, do not let yourself be conformed to this world. But the other half of that is that be, but let yourselves be transformed. Let your minds be totally reoriented to the will of God. To a God who doesn't see the human community as a group of winners and a group of losers. Who doesn't see the world community as those who deserve to be on top and others who deserve to be on bottom but sees the world community, the human community, as people who are created in God's own image. 
so much so that God comes in the person of Jesus Christ. God's image in our image, in our being, so that we can see who, how God sees us and who God wants us to be. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by allowing God to reframe the way that we see and the way that we understand so that we're no longer thinking about people as them and us, but we begin to think about the world community as we. We begin not to compete as churches with each other, but see that we all have the commission of Jesus Christ to go into the world and make disciples. Sometimes it saddens me when I see those of us who are Christians, followers of Jesus Christ, who are more identified by our politics, more identified by our ideology, more identified by our education, more identified by our economic status, more identified even by our denominational status than we are about our identity as disciples of Jesus Christ. Paul encourages us to look at the ways that the world distorts and warps God's intention. Paul encourages us to look to Jesus Christ, to see the life and the ministry, the death, the resurrection, the pattern of Jesus living, and ask ourselves, are our lives being transformed by the presence of Christ? Or are we allowing the world to slowly just conform us to its own distorted, wounded value system? Hear the words of Paul begging us to present ourselves as living sacrifices, wholly acceptable to God, so that we will not be conformed to this world, but will be transformed by the renewing of our, of our minds so that we can understand what is God's perfect, loving will for us and for this world. Amen. And amen. Our final hymn this evening is Break Out, O Church of God, a hymn that invites us as the church to not be content to stay within our own walls of our own church, to not be content for the body of Christ to just stick together, united in itself but that we have to go out. We have to share the good news of Jesus Christ. We have to show the love of Christ to all people everywhere. It reminds us in Acts chapter 8 that those who had been scattered preached the word. In many ways, we might feel scattered right now. And so our response is to preach the word. So let's sing together. Break out, O church of God. Yeah.
and now live in this world as transformed people by the grace of God implanted in our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.